Well, Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks, Wayne. I greatly appreciate you for having me, sir. Absolutely. I'm glad we were finally able to make this happen. You know, there's always that communication side when it comes to uh, our busy schedules. For sure. For sure. Well, let me start out. I always like to ask, we'll, we'll get to know your story and get to know a little bit about you, but I always like to ask these kind of get to know you questions in the beginning that are just general. So mm -hmm. I have to ask the most important one first, coffee or tea? Coffee, hundred percent. Any particular type, it doesn't have to be brand, but any type of coffee that you enjoy? I, I've been really into cold brew recently. Um, and we might get, the, we might get into this in my, in my part of my story, but um, I have an autoimmune disease now. Um, and as a result, like my stomach is a mess. And it probably had to do with me working nights for a lot of times. I know we were talking about that before we got on. Um, and just like really like ah, doing some pretty terrible things to my body in order to stay um, uh, to stay up, I guess. Uh, and so it like really affected my uh, my digestion. So for me, I'm like, I, I always enjoyed the taste of coffee, but I moved into cold brew just because it's a little bit better for my system. So, um, but yeah, I, I'll really take any kind of coffee to be honest. Okay. Now, do you do your own cold brew or is it like the, I'm not a huge Starbucks fan, but I love their no. nitro cold brew. I just don't like the brand. <laughs> yes. And, and I'm with you. Yeah. I, I like the nitro cold, cold brew stuff. Um, we have a coffee shop like right around the corner and that's like, kind of like my kids, um, they want to go out and they want to get something at the coffee shop. So that's kind of like our opportunity to go. And I, I, I always uh, come up with excuses to, to get myself to go over there to grab something too. Perfect. Yep. I, I'm with you there. So what's your favorite place to have that cup of coffee? Ooh, that's a great question. I think, um, to be honest, like the, the place isn't as important as who I'm having it with. Um, so for me, I, I like at this point in my life, like I just want to create experiences. I want to create moments when I'm like with the people that I care about the most and I could care less where that is. Um, like I like places that just like light my kids up. Like, and I don't know, it's like, it's kind of weird. You go, you get to this place where like when you have kids, it's no longer about you and what fuels you. It's like, I could be like playing unicorn princesses, like just on the floor of my daughter's room and like seeing her light up that that's the perfect place for me, which is weird, you know, cause it used to never be that way, but right. it just like totally did a 180 for me. So I would say that like, there isn't a particular place. It's more like the people that I'm around and I make sure that I, I, I guard that so that I'm, I'm like spending time, I, I guess, with the people that I want to create those memories with the most, you know, that's powerful. And that's absolutely so true. And that's why I love asking that question. Cause it always, it, it always is an answer of either reflection in that moment of self self-reflection, meditation, whatever, or exactly mm -hmm. what you said. It's who they're having that cup of coffee with. So I love it. Yep. Uh, do you have a best or worst travel story? Best or worst travel story? Um, this is a good one, man. I, I really do wish we could get back into traveling a lot more. I know that, um, I know that my my kids for some reason they like to uh, to go to any place that has a pool. I, that's like the big thing. Like we could go to like even Disneyland or we went to Legoland recently, and like they're more concerned about like, hey dad, can we go into the pool? And I'm cool with that because if the pool is a lot cheaper than than actually going to into the place. But um, but to think about like the best the, the 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 best kind of like places that I've ever been with them in terms of like um, uh, travel, I would have to say it was like the first time that I ever took them to Disneyland. Like, I, I like just like seeing the first time that they ever get to experience something. Like, I still remember like waiting in line at Space Mountain and like seeing their eyes were like, oh my God, like I, I have to go on this huge roller coaster. Like they were all talking about it and they were all getting nervous as we got to the front. And then like they got on it. And then afterwards they were like, you know, I really didn't want to go, but I, I kind of felt like you forced me, but I was just so glad that I got to experience it. It's kind of like we, I get to experience my childhood like all over again. Um, so any type of moment or any type of place that we're going to for the first time, um, I think it's like, it's, it's, it's powerful and it doesn't have to do with like necessarily spending money. It just has to do with like that first thing that maybe the first time they ever experienced it, that you just see them light up. That just like, um, it, it kind of flows through me too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. And then being a father myself, I definitely are resonating with your answers. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you a question. Do you have a favorite or most meaningful nonfiction book? Ooh. Um, That's a tough one because I'm, I'm, I got really heavy into books, like maybe about 10 years ago when my, when, when I started to transform um, internally and it, and it, it kind of led out to, to the outside. I think the one that helped me the most is from Gary John Bishop um, is called Unf Yourself. Um, so 
what I noticed is like throughout my life, like I was doing a lot of like personal self-sabotage where I was either talking down to myself or I was basically beating myself up. And I was, um, I was kind of like using myself as the reason why I couldn't propel myself forward. And, and with that self-sabotage, um, I was saying things that would actually prevent me and prohibit me from growing and coming to the realization by reading that book was just like this aha moment. Number one is like, everybody has that internal voice that talks trash. And it's like, it's that, like that wolf story, like whoever you give the power to the one that you feed is the one that grows. Um, and I didn't realize that I was doing that. I was like unconsciously doing that. Cause most of us do thinking that it was going to propel me forward. And I think that book just like really changed my mindset. It was like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. We all have that, but you also have this other aspect of it that you could focus on. You could focus on growth. You could focus on the things that are working. You could focus on your strengths versus your weaknesses. And guess what? What you focus on grows and you can actually grow that. And it was a big realization for me because I was like, all right, like, first off, everybody is going through this and I can make it through this. But then also when I make it through it, I can also be proof of what's possible for the other people who are maybe struggling with that too. And so that was like that book that kind of like woke me up. Um, plus, if you've ever listened to him on Audible, Gary John Bishop, like he, his accent is awesome. Um, and the way that he just like lays it down is just like really police related because he doesn't beat around the bush. He just tells you the way it is. And so I think he was really speaking my language. I love that. I'll check it out. I actually have not. I've just recently got into listening to books on Audible, so I will definitely check oh, yeah. that one out. So go ahead, Mark. I would love to hear your story. Well, tell us a little bit about your journey. Oh, for sure. Um, thank you for that, by the way. Um, and those are great questions. I'm going to, I, you know, I have my own podcast too. I'm, I'm going to have to pop up some of those questions from my podcast listeners too. It just makes me I, feel more, more connected. You know, it's funny because in the beginning I did it as kind of a time thing. You know, when you first do this, you're like, how am I going to fill 30 minutes of time? But over yeah. time, I've loved the answer. So it's just become part yeah. of the show. Yeah. And, and I can tell you just from being a podcast host myself, I think I grow more than even my listeners do. Like yeah. getting the opportunity to interview people. I'm like, holy cow, like how much I just learned from this one interview. Um, so my story. Uh, so I am, I, I've worked for LAPD. I'm a sergeant right now. I have 18 years on. Um, all the things that I talk about, all the things I share, both on my podcast, um, social media, all those kind of things are because I screwed it up for so long. Like I went through the pain of struggling through it. And like now being on the other side, I'm like, okay, how can I prevent as many people as possible who are in that same spot from going through the pain like I did? Um, and what do I mean by going through the pain? So I was 100 pounds overweight. Um, I wasn't making my health, mental, physical, or emotional health a priority. I wasn't connecting with my family like I wanted to. It was kind of like I was just always giving it all to the job. And I was basically making it be that my career was the reason why I couldn't be successful in other places. It was sort of like my excuse. It was the reason why I didn't have time to exercise. I didn't have time to sleep. I didn't have time to spend with my family. Um, and it was at that point that my son was born. Um, and he, when he was born, my wife had something called the, it was help syndrome. And what that is, it's like a, a version of like preeclampsia where they have to give birth to the baby. And he was 27 weeks. Um, he was one pound, nine ounces. And he was like, he could like literally fit in the palm of my hand. And he had to spend 73 days in the NICU. Um, he couldn't breathe on his own. It took him five weeks and a day before he could start breathing. And what I realized is at that point, like I had been using all of these excuses to not make myself a priority. And because of that, I wasn't physically, mentally, or emotionally ready to like be and have my first child and then have the doctor say, okay, you guys go home now um, to your home where you have like this, all these baby things set up. We're going to keep him here and you can come in every day and, and visit. And that broke me down. It broke me down big time, not only because I wasn't prepared for it, but that I also feel like I had let him down and he had no choice in this. He was like literally born to have me as his father, right? right. And so because of that self-sabotage, I beat myself up even more. And it got to this point where like I developed shingles. I had like all of these like negative impacts that were kind of happening to me. I had to go see a police psychologist, like all of these. And that was the greatest thing that I ever did, by the way, was ask for help. Because before that, I wasn't asking for help. I was trying to figure it out on my own. Needless to say, um, that was like that pivotal moment where I had decided after that, like, hey, okay, I'm never going to allow myself to let my family down, to let myself down, to let, because I, I couldn't even show up for work then, right? I had let everybody down because of those excuses, right? Yeah. And so I, I made it my, my mission from that point. I was like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know what's going to work. I don't know how I'm going to get myself in shape and do all these things but I'm going to do something and keep trying until it works. 
And that was that moment when I, when I decided to make this change of like, hey, there's an answer out there. I just don't have it. And so I don't know what I don't know. I'm just got to be willing to get out there, get uncomfortable and tell people like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Can somebody help me? And thankfully, that's when I was like connected with a coach. I was connected with my police psychologist. I was connected with like all of these resources. And I'm like, where the hell were you before? And they were there the whole time. Right. It's just, I wasn't looking for them. So I wish I could say that it was like an overnight switch. Like the next day I woke up and everything was good to go. And I was healthy. No. So it took several years of trying different things, rinsing, repeating, finding different co coaches and mentors, building up, and then finding a new coach, a new mentor. And ultimately what it ended up doing is I lost hundred pounds. I got into the best shape of my life. Um, I was able to connect better with my family. I made them a priority. They weren't just like at end of watch somebody that I saw for 10 minutes before I went to sleep and rinsed and repeat the next day. I literally created better boundaries at work. And as a result, I got promoted. I succeeded better at work because when you set up those boundaries, what you don't realize is you're actually going to be doing better in all aspects of your life. And so by doing this, I was like, okay, like I've had a lot of these successes. And so people were on the outside looking in going, Hey, what are you doing? And what they were kind of thinking is like, oh, what workout are you doing? And I'm like, no, like I'm growing as a person. I'm, I'm like surrounding myself with other people who are not only are they growing, but we're becoming better. And when you like are able to focus on the inside, like the outside always changes, right? It always catches up to whatever's going on on the inside. And so I just started focusing on that and who I was surrounding myself with, but people wanted help. And so that was the point when I was like, okay, like I've got to create a business around this. I got to help out other people. I'm, I'm, I know there's a lot of people who are like, not like entrepreneurship type people who, um, who are just like, Hey, I, I'm just going to give, go to work, get paid and go home and do all this stuff. And that's awesome. We need people like that. But there's also people who have this desire of like, Hey, I know this now I can't keep it in, you know? And I know that you're yeah. like that too, Wayne. You're like, I know this. And like, I know where those people were coming from because that was me. Yep. And I like literally cannot sit here and just not say anything. And so that's what I did is I created a business. I created mastermind teams for police officers and first responders. I've helped thousands of people like not only lose weight, because here's the thing. I want people to lose weight. I want them to feel great. But ultimately, like I want them to like live a more fulfilled life, whether that's spending more quality time with your family, asking them better questions. So you get better answers and, and actually connecting with them because sitting in front of a TV for two hours versus playing dolls with your daughter for 15 minutes. There's a difference there. And Absolutely. when you realize that and you take that time, it not only helps them connect better, but it makes you feel great too. And so, and so that's kind of like how that happened. What's, what's funny is like, and I'm sure you've realized this too, through all the podcasts you've done is from our greatest struggles comes like our greatest successes, right? It's always from those moments where like we're in the dumps, things aren't going well, we're like crappy, we feel like this is terrible, that like we have an opportunity to actually make this be our greatest opportunity, right? And I know that it didn't feel great in that moment, but like looking back at that now, I needed that to happen. Yeah, I like, I needed it. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be helping the number of people I am. And my dad, my, my kids wouldn't have the dad that they have. My wife wouldn't have the husband that she has. They wouldn't have the police sergeant that they have right now if that hadn't had happened. So that's why I was like, why am I beating myself up for that? Because in reality, I needed that to become better. And then also to use that to help out other people. So, wow, that was a super long story. I <laughs> hope that was helpful. But that was that's kind of like me in a nutshell. And the reason why I put together what I do and like my, my um, I guess, desire to really help those three areas, not only your physical, mental, and emotional health, but also connecting better with your family um, and leading from the front in your career by setting proper boundaries. Like those are the three pillars for me, which is why it, my business is Leo, family, fitness, you know, Leo, law enforcement officer, family, and fitness. Those are the three things that kind of lift me up. And that's kind of like what I focus my time and attention on. That's awesome. Uh, that is absolutely awesome. And that that's why I definitely wanted to have this conversation because everything that you're saying is so powerful and something I resonate with. And like you said, something I've been through because there mm -hmm. are both sides of the equation. You know, there are the guys that um, they're happy just going to work. They want to come home, so forth. And then there's those of us that, like you said, you, you get so excited and you're like, well, this has worked and here's where I started and here's where I am. And I yep. just want to teach. And, and I liken it more to the having a heart of a teacher, but that's exactly uh, what you're uh, speaking about. So let's uh, unpack a little bit of that. Let's go through in broad strokes. So what uh, type of positions currently you are a uh, patrol sergeant or you were a patrol sergeant, you're no longer a patrol sergeant, but what positions have you held in law enforcement since we have primarily a law enforcement uh, audience? 
Okay, for sure. So um, I worked patrol for quite a bit of time. I worked as a field training officer. I worked as a, uh, a gang officer in the field is called um, the gang enforcement detail. I work as a git detective, which is a gang in impact team detective. Um, I've worked as a sergeant. I've worked as a sergeant in internal affairs. Um, I've worked as a detective um, for robbery, uh, the robbery table. Um, and I worked as a detective um, in gangs as well. So um, a huge variety of different places um, in, in like every single place. Um, I mean, I, I, I took something away from every place, like even the places where initially I was like kicking and screaming going in, you know, you have those places yes. where you're like, hey, okay, either this is good for your family, right? Because you have more of a stable schedule or guess what? Congratulations, you got promoted. Here's where you get, you get to go. You get to start at the bottom again. Yep. Every single one of those like had, um, had things that I learned that I took away and I took it into like my next job. So always like when, when in the beginning I was very disgruntled for having to do those things. Now always I'm like, okay, like I'm, I know this is going to be a crap job, but I'm going to learn so much from it. And it's going to make me such a better like person, not only at work, but at, at home. Um, so I always take something from that last job into that next one that I'm kind of doing. Um, and nowadays, yeah, I'm in an investigation. So I'm like, I try and keep my schedule as consistent as possible. Um, just because my, you know, my wife having been having 18 years on, like not being home for Christmas, not being home for New Year's, not being home for Thanksgiving, not being home. I'm like, hey, you know, it's it's kind of time to turn that around, right? right. Um, I kind of want to be able to see my kids during those times. And so um, I take in positions inside where I'm not nor normally an admin type person, but I'm like, hey, you know what? Family's a priority. Plus, I can also teach the other officers how to be better out in the field in this in this kind of atmosphere too, uh, and to protect them so that they don't get themselves into trouble or get themselves hurt, right? And so, um, so that's an, another opportunity that I kind of see there. But all the gamuts from from all the way from patrol all the way to to sergeant. Very good. Yeah, and that's most of our journeys are typically very similar to that. And I always mm -hmm. like to ask because I think too, like you you kind of hit the nail on the head when you talked about uh, going to new positions and off uh, camera, we had talked about how like for us, every time you go to a new position that even if it's a promotion, you still go back to patrol or you go back to now you're at the bottom of that rung and you're working, yeah. working your way back up the ladder or on the bottom rung. And to the, that also law enforcement officers typically hate change. Um, they, mm -hmm. they hate the way things are and they hate to change. So that's just kind of the, um, way that we can be with a lot of things. So I, I like that approach and I like what you said about seeing it and wanting to change. So with that in mind, going back to, um, when you started this journey, you know, when, um, and I'm sorry, was it your son that was born when, yes, when your son was born? What were the first steps there? Because I think sometimes when we talk now and we're looking back and we give this broad story in five minutes or 10 minutes of this life-changing event, people mm -hmm. don't see the roller coaster that we went through and the mm -hmm. um, stress and the angst and the what the heck am I doing moments that we all go through. So can you take us to that very beginning and what those steps kind of look like and maybe one or two of the first steps you took? Absolutely. And I'll, I'll give you like a little bit of a shortcut if you're in this specific uh, situation yourself. So when that happened, um, my initial instinct was um, what tactics do I need to do to get this under wraps? And what I mean by that is the way that I break it down on my mastermind team is there's really two approaches to, to anything. One is the tactics and one is the mindset. All right. So you have the tactics and the mindset. So the tactics are like the things that you do. So people are like, Hey, I want to lose weight. The first thing we do is like, okay, should we eat keto? Should we do intermittent fasting? How many days should we work out? How many days should we do this? And that's the wrong place to start. But that's where I started. I was like, hey, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do CrossFit. I'm going to run on an empty stomach. I'm going to try all these supplements. And I didn't attack the problem. The problem for me was in here. It was my mindset, right? Because everything flows through it. It's like the ground floor, right? And if you um, you are going to be attacked by your mindset when you are tired, when it's end of watch, when the alarm goes off, when you're on duty for like a massive amount of overtime and, you know, somebody has like somebody gets pizza or somebody brings in donuts or anything like that. Like that doesn't matter if you're like doing keto or intermittent fasting, right? Your, right. your mindset and how like you can develop this to actually work for you. And so my initial for the first couple of years was, hey, what tactic can I do? What ultimately got it, got me in alignment was, um, and you kind of talked about it earlier, is like developing myself, like personal development, like plugging into things that would help me target my mindset. 
Um, so one of the things that I always think about is when the alarm goes off, I don't think about like how comfortable I'm going to feel to stay in bed. What I, what I feel like is like, I ask myself who needs me to show up today? Like who needs Mark to be on his A game? And when I think about my kids, when I think about like, like this is not just a matter of me pushing the snooze button. This will make a huge impact because they're going to see dad waking up early, be taking care of himself, doing his, you know, reading um, any meditation that I'm doing, doing my workouts. Like I'm making myself a priority and I'm literally showing them like the modeling the behavior for them to see. Right. And right. I give up that opportunity if I hit the snooze button. And if I'm thinking about just me and how comfortable it's going to feel in bed, like that's the wrong mindset to have, right? It's very easy to focus on that. But my focus is like, okay, who needs me to be on my A game? And then of course I have a mastermind team. I have other people who are also waking up at that exact point. What am I going to do when I tell them, hey guys, yeah, I know that you guys um, got up and you guys did all your stuff, but guess what? I didn't like, that's that motivation for me to get up and go, Hey, you know, that is what works for me is getting my mindset on point. And then of course, in the morning time is when I do like um, my gratitude, focus on like three things that I'm, that I didn't talk about this week yet that I'm really grateful for. And that just brings up just a whole bunch of other feelings. Right. And then I, I, I spend some time reading a book about 10 minutes a day. De depends on what kind of book um, or what kind of thing I'm in. Sometimes it's business books. Sometimes it's parenting. Sometimes it's being a better husband. Sometimes it's police related books. Sometimes it's just like mindset or motivation based stuff. But I basically tell my mindset where to go for that day. And then the tactics come in, right? And then it's like, okay, what should I do? Because otherwise, if you start in the reverse, you're going to get to that point where you don't feel like doing it, where you're going to feel tired, where you're, and, and it's very easy for you to give yourself the chance to get off the hook at that point. But if you put yourself in that environment of like, not only uh, making sure that you fuel your mindset, but you surround yourself with other people who are doing that. So that on days when you just don't feel like it, when I'm like, ah, you know, my energy zapped today, I can be around other people who are going to fuel me up. I can, you know, listen to podcasts like this. I can watch YouTube videos. I can read books. I can do whatever, like it's going to help fuel me so that I can focus on that mindset. So when you, when you say like, like how can best people best get started? That is just to like, fuel your brain and that whether that's like you focusing on your fo focusing on what your grit um like gratitude like what three things are you like most grateful for this morning or picking up some kind of like book or some kind of audio that inspires you that's the that's the thing that's going to get you to take those steps because people say just take one step a day right and i think that's super important but what gets you to take that step is having the right mindset because if your mindset is all i got to do is take one step and today's that opportunity to take that one step am i going to give it up Am I going to give up this opportunity? Because, you know, doing those things like really, is it that hard to hit the button that or to, to get out of bed when the alarm goes off versus pushing for it, pushing the button for eight minutes? Right. Like it's not, it's not that hard. Like, is it hard to, to eat the diff difference between like drinking water versus drinking soda? Is it really hard? No, it's not. It's like both of them are liquids. Like when you think about it, right. What right. makes it hard is the mindset. And so we really make things super hard for ourselves. But if we focus on the mindset first and we break through that, then the tactics have an opportunity to work, right? And I'm not saying the tactics aren't important. They are. And finding your tactics that work is important, but you don't put that in front of the mindset. Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. And I okay. love that. A couple of things I want to unpack there real quick. You mentioned a little bit your morning routine, mm -hmm. um, understanding the schedules that law enforcement typically has, because um, yeah. sometimes you'll listen to podcasts and you'll listen to, you know, guys like Ed Mylad, or you'll listen to some of these guys and they'll start going through, well, this is my morning routine, or this is what I do. And it starts the yeah. evening before, and they'll go through this long conversation. And then we're sitting there saying, yeah, but you didn't just work a 12 hour shift that really spilled over to 14 and, you know, yeah. drove home and now you're doing something after three hours of sleep. Yep. So what kind of things do you keep consistent on in your morning routine? And does it start in the evening for you? Or how do you approach that? That's a great question, Wayne. You are a great interviewer, by the way. Um, powerful question. So Thank here's you. the thing. Um, this, is what I, this is what I help my mastermind team with. And I'm going to break this down into two pieces. The first one is I prepare in advance for when the stuff hits the fan, okay? Because when, when, when uh, we got... Um, mobilized uh, last May, and I was working on the streets for 13 days in a row, massive overtime every single day, I still had a routine. Like I even the fact that just because of everything that was going up, it was just it was pruned to make sure it was just the most important activities. So there's this concept called the 8020 rule, which basically means 
20% of the activities that you do produce 80% of the results in your life. Okay. It's the Pareto principle. We've, we, you probably heard about it like in many different times, but this is an aspect of it that comes to your time management that will literally blow like your mind because the 20% of the activities that you're doing are producing 80% of results. Well, the opposite is true. So 80% of the stuff you're doing are producing the only remainder 20%, right? right. And we use, we use this as an example earlier, like when it comes to spending time with your family, 80% of the time is when you're sleeping, when you're just like eating at the table, you're not really talking, when you're watching TV together, when you're just like cleaning up around the house and your kids, 20% of the, of the time though, you're like engaged, you're having a conversation with them, you're going on walks with them, you're spending time in the car with them, right? That 20% produces 80% of the connection that you're going to have with your family. Right. It's the other 80% that we think that we're spending time with our family that we're really not. It's just like very, very little. Well, that also happens in our, in our life. So um, when I figure out like my morning routines, I've tried many different things. But what I now do is I actually have a tracker that I use and I give to my mastermind team, which has the activities that I do, and it helps personalize it for them based off of what their 20% is. So some of those things are, planning out my day. So one of the things that helps me out every single day, no matter if I have like a 16 hour overtime shift or whatever, or if I have extra time, I always make sure I plan out my day. Gratitude is something that I do. It takes me just a couple, couple minutes to do. Um, reading a book, I will at least read for five minutes. On those days where I'm like just totally exhausted, I will at least read for five minutes. Um, and after that, I will try and get my body moving. Those are like my four absolutely no matter what I've got to do. And it looks different between like, if I have the whole day. So today, Fridays are my RDOs. So basically I schedule all my podcasts. I do all my interviews, all my, my mastermind stuff, anything that I can do business wise. And so I have like in the morning time, about three hours to do like an actual routine business workout, all that stuff. I do it super early. So it's before my kids wake up. So when they wake up, boom, I'm unplugged. I'm done. Like I've gotten most done more stuff than people do in a whole day. Right. In just right. like the first three hours. But on the other days where I'm like working 12s, I got like overtime. Cause there's like a, an interview and then something happens at work. So it's a, those are when I'm like super laser focused. And I have like maybe a 30 to 45 minute block where I get the most important stuff. And people are like, well, what is the most important stuff? And that's, what I help people figure out inside of my mastermind, but really what it is, it's, it's individual, it's personalized. That's why you're going to hear like people have different things that they do in the morning time. And like you said, some people even start the night before. And really it's like the, finding out what that 20% is for you. Like what is going to help you fuel yourself through in, the entire day? And then never giving that up. Meaning if you have a day where it's like some things go to crap and you like don't have the time, looking and going, okay, normal, the, normally these are my 20% of the activities, right? But there's also a secret 20 of the 20. That's like when you get down, like, boom, like this is, it's actually the 4% of everything you do. That is the stuff that is like so, so critical that you make sure you do. So it's all about like, for me, of course, like you can kind of hear, I'm like, uh, I'm like a math geek, right? So I'm all about like, hey, how can I get the most out of, not, out of, out of, the time that I do have. And I can tell you that I used to be just a full-time police officer and I didn't take care of my health. I wasn't spending time with my family. And like, I didn't have any of that stuff on a wrap. I wasn't reading books, wasn't doing any of that stuff. And I had no time. Now I'm still a full-time police officer. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I have my own podcast. I have my own mastermind. I have my own business. Like I'm doing my health and fitness is in the best shape of my life. I still have an autoimmune disease, which means I have to take injections, Humira injections, which definitely don't make me feel good. Like I have all of these things going, but the reason why I can do that is not because I'm special. It's because I've identified like what the most important things are, what those 20% of those activities are that produce the 80% of my life. And I remove or eliminate or outsource or do like a lot less of those other activities because they don't really move the needle. It's kind of like that busy work. You're doing that busy work thinking it's, it's actually giving you some kind of like results, but it's really not. Wow. That's, I tell you, Mark, I hope the listeners, if, if they turn off the rest of this thing, which I hope they don't <laughs> keep listening, please. But what you just said right there is absolutely powerful. And it's a, 
it's funny because I kind of went through the similar journey in my life and hearing you say it and put words to it and articulate it. It's just, it's absolutely powerful. And if we could mm -hmm. just get this idea and I love that dichotomy that you present that at mm -hmm. this point, I was working the same job and all these things were kind of falling apart and I just didn't have any more time. And I call it the Netflix syndrome because, you know, mm -hmm. I know even if we personally don't watch a lot of Netflix. We all know guys on our uh, platoon that can tell you this is yep. series and that series and that series and so forth. So, and here we were, and then here we are now, and we're still working the same job. And now you've got time to do this, that. So it kind of talks about priorita prioritization as well. Yep. Um, I don't know if you've ever uh, read or listened to uh, James Clear book, Atomic Habits, but yeah. kind of going down that road, let me just ask you that line between mindset and habit. Cause I'm finding for me, mindset's part of it, but if it's just mindset and the idea of powering through, I mm -hmm. sometimes struggle there. So do you want to speak on that mm -hmm. a little bit? Absolutely. First off, that book is amazing. Um, that, and that was one of the books that when you were talking to me about it earlier, uh, that's one of those books where I'm like, this was, this was definitely a game changer. Yeah. Um, when, when it comes to mindset and, and when it comes to habits, what I have noticed is, um, so a lot of people think that you have to be like this disciplined person. They think that the mark right now, like I, my discipline is at is highest. It's not, I'm not a disciplined person. Um, I'm disciplined for long enough to make it into a habit to make it so I don't have to think about it anymore. Like, I mean, that's the truth. Like if yeah. I had to really think about like what I was just saying, like waking up every single morning and forcing myself to wake up, it would be, it, it would be terrible. Like I, I have to put myself in a situation, just like James Clear says, like, I have to set myself up to make the habits that I want to perform easier and the habits that I don't want to perform harder. Right. right. And so like when people say like they put their, I don't know, their, their alarm clock across the way. So they have to get up. That makes it harder for you to still stay in bed. Right. And in right. the same with like water, you want to drink more water, put it in front of you. So it's visible. It makes it much easier for you to remind yourself to do it. Right. Same with me. Like when I have a team of people that I know that are kind of depending on me because I'm helping coach them, like that's the greatest motivator of all. Like, like it's not because I know everything. It's because I put myself in an uncomfortable position because I want to like continue to push myself to grow because I never want to reach what I thought before, which is like this plateau of like, Hey, I'm good now. Right. That that'll never happen. Like every time I was, I was interviewing somebody today and they said, every time that I find an answer, I also find that it stems off and 15 more questions pop into my mind. <laughs> and I'm like, you're so right. Because there's yeah. like this never ending thing of like, what can I do to keep growing? And so how I do that is I use just enough self-discipline and I don't do it in 42 different areas at once. I focus on one. I make the things that I want to do easier, more visible. I make the things that I don't want to do invisible so that I don't do it or harder to do. And then I do it for long enough, which it's different for everything you do, right? And But once you do it, for long enough, it just becomes habit. So doing this, this daily like routine, and you guys have all experienced it. Like when you get into a new routine for working out, right? In the beginning, it's like, ah, oh, man, I got to wake up. I got to do this. But after a couple of weeks of doing that, it like, you feel better, right? You right. have a better mindset. You're just, you're just like more clear. You're feeling stronger. You're feeling more confident and you miss a day. You feel like crap. You feel like what's going on. That's because the habit was catching on and your body was like, Hey, I kind of like this. You know, I was resistant to it in the beginning because it was changed, but I kind of like this. So let's keep doing this. And so it, that was when that habit was being built because you get somebody who's like one of those hardcore gym people, one of those hardcore, like, Hey, I love exercising, which is me now, which is weird. Cause I never used to be. Yeah. It's funny but, how that changes. I, I'm with you hundred percent. It does. It does. And, and now you get that person to miss it and they feel like, it's the end of the world. Like their whole day is like crumbled and you're like, man, I feel like crap. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't get to exercise today or I didn't get to read my book. And it's because your, your body wants to be consistent, right? And so I just practice self-discipline enough until it's like, it's, it's a no brainer. It happens automatically. And then I think, hmm, where else can I do this? What do I need to work on next? And then I pick one other thing. It's not like, hey, let me increase my the people that I'm speaking to for my business at the same time that I'm trying to eat healthier, at the same time I'm trying to add a new workout, and the same time I'm trying to, trying to take the lieutenant's test at work. It's like, no, like I got to focus on one area at a time. And then you can build that up. Um, and mindset is what will help you, give you that push and help you with that self-discipline until it becomes a natural habit. And then you can, once again, continue to move that mindset into a different area. Does that make sense? It does. And that's absolutely powerful. And that is 
also very helpful to the listeners. Um, I love that. And it's something that I saw personally work really well for me, because I think mm-hmm. all these things, at least in my opinion, they, they start to become intertwined over time, you know, because mm-hmm. like exactly what you were describing. Um, I love Ed Milet talked um, a little bit about starting to see yourself differently. So you talked about that getting up in the morning and go to the gym and mm-hmm. so forth. Well, he likened it to a smoker and one of the podcasts I was listening to him, um, he uh, likened it to a smoker trying to quit. If mm-hmm. they can get to the mindset that they're not a smoker, well, a smoker doesn't mm-hmm. smoke. So now you're not a smoker mm-hmm. trying to quit, which is a cycle mm-hmm. that's going you're going to constantly be fighting. And I found in my life, it was much more um, with the working out. If I started thinking of myself as someone, you know, a fit person or someone who exercises or an athlete, well, an athlete doesn't miss the gym. So what right. am I doing? And, you know, you just start to change that mindset and you begin to think differently. We've talked quite a bit on the mindset side. Just quickly, let's talk a little bit on the tactic side. I'd be curious mm-hmm. to hear um, my personal story over the last year. I also lost 50 pounds and uh, awesome. due to a great coach um, that was able to help me out as well. And like it really helped me with the mindset side because I, I definitely would do different fad diets over the years. And this mm-hmm. wasn't a diet in any way. This is more a sustainable way to live. Mm-hmm. So that speaking, I'd like to hear a little bit on your thoughts on nutrition versus physical fitness and the marriage kind of between the two when it comes to our careers and what we do. For sure, for sure. First off, Wayne, um, congratulations on those 50 pounds. That is huge. Um, I mean, it's it's the the external transformation is awesome, but I know what kind of what it takes the internal transformation to happen uh, to get there. So man, congratulations. And I know it's not just something that you see on the outside, but I'm sure your family, your family has seen it. Uh, and, and just like role model in the behavior. So man, uh, hats off to you. Um, in terms of, of fitness and nutrition. So yes, that, that is actually where I first started coaching before I actually got into like the whole mindset, personal development and personal growth based um, kind of like life coaching um, stuff. So yeah, I mean, um, when it comes to, to fitness and nutrition, I know a lot of people are like, um, they think it's like, I guess they kind of like, they want the answer, like which one should I most focus on? And, and my answer is never like an or situation. It's always an and. It's like, how could you do both? Um, there's a lot of people that I come into contact with who can't exercise. There's like, whether they're injured, you know, I, I talk to police officers all the time who have like back injuries or shoulder injuries and things like that. And yes, you can primarily focus on like nutrition in that aspect, but both of them are like, are super critical. Um, so let me just talk about, about fitness real quick. For me, um, Fitness has to be number one, something that um, that can fit within my career that is not only just helping me propel myself to be like better at bench pressing, but actually like helping me to become better in life. Something that is based off of like functional based fitness and also something that is not something that's going to take all the time of the day for me to do. Now, there's a lot of different ways of exercising. And what I have to say is like, Finding the, the piece that's going to work for you within whatever parameters you want it to be is ultimately what's going to be the best for you. Um, I have, um, I mean, I've coached thousands of people and like the, their journey is like, everybody's journey is like slightly different and they have to find that piece that they actually, I'm not going to say enjoy. Cause there's times when I don't enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it afterwards and I definitely enjoy the results. Um, but there's gotta be like some kind of congruence with like the actual routine that, that makes it so that it doesn't feel like it's just all terrible the whole time you're doing it. And some days, sometimes that's like people are doing hit workouts and it's four days a week. Sometimes people are focused on running. Sometimes people are focused just on like uh, rucking. I, I mean, a lot of people have been getting yeah. into that, just throwing on a backpack and going out and, and doing that stuff. Like whatever it is that like, that you can like do long-term, I think that you can, you can definitely find different workouts and stuff around that. Um, you know, for me in particular, I use programs that I can do at home. I use programs that don't require a lot of weights that I could just do in my garage. And I also like the fact that I get directed on what I should and shouldn't be doing. So just like how, when I was like, Uh, at my rock bottom, I wanted to find a coach, somebody who knew more than me. So I didn't have to be that person. So I didn't have to go out and like learn all of the different science and all this kind of stuff. I found somebody who was like the expert. And so that's what I do. I plug into like online systems that are like full of people who know what they're doing. They like literally, this is what they do for a living is they help design programs. They help with nutrition. They help with that stuff. And I plug into them because 
they give me the direction that I need. I feel more confident when people are telling me about my form, when people are telling me about how much I should be lifting, when people are, are like giving me the push to like, not just do one set and then wait 10 minutes to do the next one. Right. right. And so having this science and having somebody giving me that direction is, is something that I fully plug into. A lot of people on my team do too. Um, the system that I use is from Beachbody. Um, so there's like a whole bunch of different like online streaming workouts and things like that. And I help a lot of times connect people with like a program that's going to be good for not only what they're looking to achieve, but also what they like versus what they dislike. Um, and getting that structure really is what it's all about. Because a lot of times I notice that people just go to the gym and they kind of wing it. There's a lot of yeah. science behind fitness, a lot of science behind it. And I'm a certified personal trainer. Let me just tell you, like I've got, I got certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. I don't even write training programs. And the reason why is because it gets very complicated and it's not just a matter of, let me just do three chest workouts today and put, put them, you know, marry them up to back and then I'll be good to go. Like there's so much structure in between rest repetition and volumes and all that stuff. So I leave that to the expert. So find something fitness related that is based off of science that works in your life, really what that is. And if that's just like, Hey, like, I just want to get out and go for a walk, or I just want to get out and just put on my, uh, put on a backpack with just some extra books or something in it. Like that's the way that I, I people get started all the time. And people yeah. lose hundreds of pounds and people get into incredible shape by just starting like that. Right. Um, so that's the fitness aspect and the nutrition aspect too. Like um, a lot of people feel like they have to be deprived to actually, you know, um, see success in their nutrition. And you don't, it's just, once again, there's an answer out there. There are different nutrition programs. Um, the one that I follow also through Beachbody, very, very easily to like manipulate um, in terms of like actually eat food that I enjoy. I have to enjoy the food that I eat. That's just something about me. Like I look forward to it. As a matter of fact, the night before I'm asking my wife, Hey, can we have this for breakfast and this right. for lunch and this for dinner? And she's like, Oh my God, Mark, like, come on. Can't you just be spontaneous? And I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah, no. I need a plan woman or I'm <laughs> going to jump off the opposite direction because in the moment, I never make good decisions. It's when I pre-plan that I send to, tend to make good decisions. Yep, um, you and me both, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, good. So yeah, it's, it's all about like, um, uh, for me, finding a nutrition plan and a fitness plan that really work for me and helps me figure out the science so that I don't have to necessarily figure it out. So, and I tried personal trainers. Um, I tried all those things. This is really what's worked for me. And I'm not saying this because this is what everybody should do. Like you've got to find your own thing. But like you said, once you find it, like you'll know, because this is something that you could just do forever. And if that doesn't, that doesn't feel hurtful to you. I can still go out and I had like, you know, some food that I shouldn't have had yesterday. And I kind of feel it today, but I can still just be a human being and enjoy what I eat and enjoy what I do for exercise and get into awesome shape. And it doesn't, it's not going to take me two hours in the gym and I'm not going to be eating chicken, broccoli, and rice every single day. So it's, it's really something that once again, having an open mindset of like, it's out there, there's a solution. I just got to be willing to go out there and find it and maybe connect with a coach, connect with somebody, connect with a system and see if that works for you. And, and can I just add this one thing? And this is like something that I, I think is like super important to all this. And um, it has a lot to do with like the book that I recommended. And that is like, if you try something and it does not work, it has nothing to do with you. All right. I just want to take, I just want to take a second and say that. All right. Because so many times we blame ourselves because of something that worked, doesn't work, or it worked for Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, intermittent fasting worked for him. It didn't work for me, so that means there's a problem with me. No, guys, I can tell you, having coached tens of thousands of police officers and first responders, that is not the thing at all. I right. found people who came into my system, didn't work for them. They found something else. And it was awesome. And it worked for them. Not only did it fuel their mindset, but it also got them incredible results. I've seen people put body wraps around their stomach. And for some reason, that stuff has worked for them. So here's the thing. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Stop beating yourself up. I know a lot of times I used to beat myself up because I thought it would push me to actually become better. It doesn't. Whenever you beat yourself up, you're actually more up to not actually doing anything for it. You know, you beat yourself up so much that you don't actually take the steps you want to. That's when you over drink, overeat, overdo whatever it is, right? You go down that wrong path because you're beating yourself up. So it, it may give you that impression of like, hey, this didn't work. There's something wrong with me. There's not. You just didn't find that thing for you. It's not, this isn't it. Just keep looking, you know? And yeah. having that mindset will get you to stop hesitating and stop like not taking action. Because like how we all said here, it, it all starts with action, right? You, yeah. Just thinking about it. It's, I mean, it's great to start off with, but if you're not acting and doing something, 
and you're just like in that spiral of, of circling, you're, you're really not going to go anywhere. So um, I think that's, that's probably the biggest takeaway that I want to give people is that it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that thing that you tried and it's just not for you. So what's the next thing you can try and just move on. The quicker you get out of the past and all that kind of stuff, the quicker you're going to be able to, to, to go find that thing and have success. Um, I'm sure Wayne, you have plenty of experiences where you tried a bunch of things and they didn't, they didn't succeed. Right. Absolutely. And same with me. And guess what? That's just the way it is. And guess what? I'm going to probably do this 10 more times, like around my business, around my police career, my own parenting. Like I, I've gotten much better as a parent, but like just the other day, I kind of like got upset at my son. Cause he was saying things to my, to my wife. And I was like, Oh, afterwards I was like, okay, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that. Like, that's definitely not something that, that the, the mark that I want to be it wouldn't have reacted like that. That's just the way life is. We make mistakes like that for a reason. It's kind of like trying to teach us a lesson, right? Hey, yep. figure out something else. And so, so um, never blaming yourself for it and realizing that it's not you. It's just like that other thing didn't work. There's another resource out there. Just get out there and find it. So true. And I hope uh, to each of the listeners out there that you're absolutely catching that because we have both been there and I've been there mm -hmm. as well. And I've tried different programs and in multiple different things, not just mm -hmm. in the business world as well. And we could go down a lot mm -hmm. of different trails with that. That's oh, yeah. really great. So uh, Mark, let me uh, just kind of, as we're wrapping up here, what, um, so you have a mastermind, you've talked about that a few times. So mm -hmm. maybe just a little bit of an overview on what you offer as far as the mastermind and some coaching, just so the listeners have a good idea. For sure. For sure. Thank you for that, Wayne. Um, and first off, I got to say, I, I greatly appreciate you putting the, together the podcast. I've listened to plenty of them. And I have to say, like, people don't understand the the amount of um, energy and effort that it takes. I know we talked before this, like, literally, you got off um, uh, early this morning, you took like a quick nap, and like, you're back here, like putting in this energy and effort, just because of your heart and because you want to actually help people um, make progress in their life, make significant changes. And, and I have to say, I, I hats off to you for that. Um, and, you, and we appreciate you and I, and I know your listeners do too. Um, in terms of uh, the things that I do, I, I offer many, many different things. Usually the best thing that I, I, um, I do is I, I connect with people generally, um, either on Instagram or Facebook to find out how best I can help. And if that's like, it's outside of what I do, I'm like 100%, I'm all in, I'm going to share with you like the different resources and stuff that I can send your way. Um, because I'm all about ultimately connecting you with a resource that's really going to help change your life. And that's with somebody else, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you that direction. Um, a couple of things that I do. Number one is I have my own podcast, which is free, of course, Leo Family Fitness Podcast. Um, have a lot of great episodes on there, a lot of great free information that I actually, some of those, uh, some of that information I share a little bit more in, in depth inside of my mastermind team. I have a lot of great interviews there too. Wayne, I need to have you on the show, definitely, um, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so that's my, my free podcast. And then I have my mastermind team. So what I do is um, I have found that whenever I've succeeded in life, it had a lot to do with the people that I surrounded myself with. So when I was surrounding myself with people who were eating crap, who weren't fueling the, their bodies right, who weren't exercising, who were using excuses, who weren't connecting with their family, I naturally became like them. It was just like normal. I mean, I so much that like, I remember like when I was just early on and I was a hard charger out in the field, when they would ever put me with a slug, I would start to take on that person's characteristics and I would start like dodging radio calls and not wanting to do things. And I'm like, what, like, what's wrong with me? Like, I really do want to, and it's because of the people that you surround yourself with. Yep. And so what I found is like, whenever I succeeded with my health, my fitness, my family, my whatever, it had a lot to do with surrounding myself with other people who also value that, but we're growing and we're not letting the excuses get the best of them. And by doing that, surrounding myself with people who are energetic, who are positive, who are motivating, it fueled me. It's contagious, guys. Like the people that you are around are contagious. Even if it's like a Facebook post, you probably have seen like a video or something where like it like fueled you up and you felt great, right? Like afterwards, but the opposite happened too, right? Especially around politics, you see something and you're like, oh my God, and it's, you read it and then you just feel like somebody sucks some life out of you, right? Yeah. It's, it's because it's contagious. And so taking total control of that is what we do inside of the mastermind. So we have like live calls, we have um, access to behind the scenes podcast recordings. Um, we have like a tracker, like I said, where we help you identify the 20% of activities that you can do throughout the day that will produce 80% of the results in your life. And it's around those three pillars. It's around taking care of your mental, physical, and emotional health, um, getting, which is getting into incredible shape. Um, it's also connecting better with your family. And I know I talked about that briefly, but really the level and the power of the questions that you ask your family is, is, is helps you with the power of those connections. And let me give you an example. So one thing that you can do, and we did this last week, um, last weekend, is um, we, we talked to our kids and what we did is we, we put together this like um, whiteboard and on this whiteboard, um, it said on the top, it said, um, 
I feel most loved when you, and it had a dot, dot, dot. And then we divide it into four, four spaces, all right? So the top space was dad, the second space was mom, this was Andrew, and this was Alyssa. Those are my kids. And so everybody got a post-it note. And we're like, okay, guys, this is what we want you to do. So you feel most loved when, and then if it's dad, what do you feel most loved? What am I doing when you feel like you're most loved by me? Like, what, what are we doing? What am I doing? What am I saying? What are those things that make you feel like I really love you? And so my son's like, oh, when you play tickle with me. And my daughter's like, oh, when you go on walks with me. Oh, when you say nice things about the clothes that I wear. And I'm like, holy smokes, I didn't know that that was like making a huge impact. So after that, even my wife, and my wife is like, I really enjoy when you slow down and you just have a conversation with me and you're like really into the conversation and you're telling me just about your day, even if it's just like stupid police stuff. Like I like just being on the inside of that. And I didn't know that, right? So many times we want to guess what makes the other people happy, right? right? We never ask them. And so that's what they did. That's what we did. And so for me, I grabbed all the post-it notes. Now I know what fuels my daughter, my son, and my wife to basically it, it to them, it makes me feel like I, they're loved by me when I do those things, when I say those things and vice versa. So those questions, when you're saying, when you're asking your, your wife here, you, you know, you, you got a few minutes to, and you're sitting down, you're about ready to go to bed. You could say, you know what, when, when you feel most loved by me, what is it that I'm doing? Or what is it that I'm saying that makes you feel that way? Yeah. Or, you know what, before we got married, there was probably some things that we were doing that you really enjoy doing that we haven't done recently. What are those things that you really love to do back then? Those kind of questions are better than how was your day? You know, right. or what, what, you know, it's like those questions draw out. What it does is it actually draws out um, the positives from both the past, the present and the future. It's like, you're looking for the positive aspects of those things. Instead of like all the negative stuff, you're like trying to pull out like what, like when you feel most connected to me, what are we doing? That's a question that's like going to bring out like, oh, when you're doing this and it just gives you so much insight and the connection that you have with your family is on a different level. So I know I kind of went on a detour. That's, that's kind of the stuff that we kind of do inside of the mastermind. So we focus on family and of course our career. So leading from the front doesn't necessarily mean you like doing a whole lot of action and burning yourself out. Like burnout is like a real thing in our career because we feel like like it's the career that kind of does that. But here's the thing. If you look in your department or departments otherwise, you're going to see people who, who don't like, who, who are excelling in the career and they're not burned out, right? They still have their family. They still have their health and fitness and success leaves clues. And so looking at that and going, okay, this is just something that I'm making this mean, but it's not necessarily the truth. What can I do to make myself not only a better leader on the job, but actually set up better boundaries so that I can say no when it comes down to that time so that I can spend the time in the other areas of my life um, where the, like, it's the most important because having that, I don't want to say balance, it's kind of like more like a synergy between right. them all because there's going to be times like when the riots were happening in LA and there was 13 days in a row, I couldn't spend as much time as I wanted to with my kids, right? And right. so I got creative and on the way home, I would call and I would talk to a different kid or my wife for like the whole trip home, because I was like, this is the only way that I can do it, right? You get creative when you, when you run out of time, right? But still there's like different seasons. You just have to move that synergy and stuff around. So those are the three things that I do for our mastermind team. I use different kinds of resources to do that. Um, and then of course, like I said, the free podcast, all that kind of stuff that I have there. Perfect. And the best place for them to start for that is leofamilyfitness.com. So I'll yes, be sure to place. link that up for them as well. So let me just ask you as kind of a final question that I ask everybody. Um, mm -hmm. What is, we've, we've went over so many great things and so many concepts and ideas and different things that'll help people. But I always like to ask the one question that just kind of brings it all together. So what is the one thing, the one takeaway that law enforcement officers can do that'll make a positive difference in their personal lives? Hmm. Man, that is such an amazing question. So I, I know it's going to sound kind of cliche, um, but really ultimately it's like believe in themselves. Like, here's the thing. I just told you about some of the successes that I have and they came out of the greatest failures of my life. I felt like I was the worst father. I was the worst police officer. Um, I was the worst human. Like it, all of that, what I just described to you came on the heels of like a total breakdown in my life. And so many people think that where they are right now, because of where they're at, it's not possible for them. But I'm here to tell you, living proof, not only of myself, but thousands of other people that I've helped, that it doesn't matter where you are, 
Like it is 100% possible for you. Whether or not you believe it is irrelevant because I know that there's people who've gotten to that point where they're like, they don't believe it. And that's so important, critical to find a coach who can believe in you until you have enough belief in yourself to move forward. But I just want to say like, if there's one thing that like I want to instill on people is like, you can 100% do it. It has nothing to do with the career. It has nothing to do with anything of your past. Today, you can make a decision and it could be entirely different than any decision you've ever made in your entire life. And you will instantly become that person. You could instantly do that. It's not as hard as we make it out to be. I love that. Thank you so much, Mark. That is absolutely great advice. And this has been a wonderful conversation and we could go on and on. I mean, there's been a lot of nuggets in here that will really make a difference in some people's lives. So I appreciate it. So uh, again, one more time, the best place to get a hold of you, uh, leofamilyfitness.com. So listeners, please be sure to go there, check that out. It will be linked up in the show notes. Mark, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Wayne. Like I said, I, I know the amount of work and energy and effort you put into this is greatly appreciated, sir. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.